I'm James. And I'm Nettie. Did you say secret trapdoor in the bunk room? What? A king size bed with a baby hammock? What about a driver's seat that converts to an office? Welcome to our video house bus tour. We hope you love it as much as we do. We'd love to hear what you think. Would you live in a house bus? Let us know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button and get ready to see how chaos and creativity collide in a tiny space that's big enough for a great adventure. Hi, I'm Maddie. Welcome to our house bus. I insisted that we have a bug screen because I hate mosquitoes and sand flies. This is amazing. It's magnetic. So when the kids are going in and out, it just automatically closes again. It's fantastic. Highly recommend. This entrance brings us to the middle of the bus. So we have a wee mud room at the entrance here. We have kids' um, jackets and hats and shoes down the bottom. And then over here, we hung some hooks up for James and I bigger, longer jackets and extra hats as well. Through here, we have the kitchen. We decided to go with an L-shaped kitchen. We spent a lot of time looking at kitchen designs um, and I really loved the L-shaped and I really wanted a green kitchen. So I got those two things, thanks to my husband. Um, so we have cupboards up the top. We've got tea and coffee, breads and cups, medicine, supplements, uh, first aid. Do I even open it? It's my husband's utility cupboard, as he likes to call it. It does need some more organization though. So we'll close that one. We have a full-size gas oven here. It is awesome, it cooks roast lamb, roast chicken, full dinners for our family of eight, no problem. The sink, I love this tap, it comes off. It's got the spray bits, you can move it all around to clean, big pots. Pull out drawers that are soft closing. So herbs and spices, wine, juice, bottles go down the bottom. We've got dishcloths and tea towels and rubbish bags, can drawer corner cupboard which it keeps all of our big pots and pans, bowls, everything you need for cooking in a regular kitchen it fits in there and actually we haven't had anything break or smash with traveling it just all kind of stays in there which is awesome. Baking and cooking utensils in here, plates, bowls, cups, Tupperware, plastic containers. Uh, we have a magnetic knife holder when we travel we take all the knives down and put them into the top drawer over there just in case because we don't want knives going flying or dropping on toes i use this broom handle holder um, for my rolling pin which works perfectly because it doesn't really fit in any other drawers we've got the full-size fridge up here veggie drawer and then it's a pull out freezer down the bottom that's like a chest freezer style um, and that's awesome oh and an ice maker Pantry, again all of the things are pull out drawers apart from the top shelf um, and that kind of holds all of our bigger bulkier like packets of chips and snacky food um, but I've got like all my baking stuff, flour and oats and then down the bottom is rice and salt and any other sort of bigger baking bags that don't fit in those drawers. Up here is our very full but this is kind of pasta, dried goods and cereal. And I saw a really cool idea on Pinterest for um, turning the toe kick space into drawers. So we got that done. And these, this is a really big one that pulls out. It's got my um, glad wrap and baking paper and some cookbooks in there. And then this one down here has got tuna, basically just actually cans of fish in that one. But it's extra space, but things have to be small to fit in them have two bins here which is great and then down the bottom in this cage we've got potatoes and onions that's open air storage for them a little kitchen stool which is very easy to open that's i only can't reach the ceiling fan up there so i have to stand on the stool to do that <laughs> chopping boards sunglasses scissors brush and shovel things like that all fit on there which is awesome and we hang our mugs. We've got a little portable smoothie maker, coffee, and actually our little um, kettle hangs up here when we're traveling. Fits on perfectly. If you're thinking about bus life or van life, we just want to encourage you, it is possible. With some determination and some hard work, you can do it too. Subscribe to our channel 
in our future videos, we're gonna share about how we got here, more about the construction, and how you can get here too. So then we come through to the lounge. Um, another reason I liked the L-shaped kitchen was so that we could have an L-shaped couch. This area fits our family. It's very cozy, but it's lovely. We love it. And we've pulled up to a beautiful spot and there's stunning views out the window. Um, the kids sit and read. We also eat our meals here. We have a table that's stored here. Um, and that just sets up in the middle here. And we sit and eat. And we have seven seat belts on here. So the kids can choose to either travel in the van with me or they can sit in the bus um, and travel with James. We've just added the shelf in, um, in our latest leg of the journey, which I absolutely love. It fits all of our books that we use on a daily basis, pretty much. So we've got our Bibles and sort of family devotions up here. We've got plant books and remedy books for like um, home health. Um, and then our current reading books that were our read aloud that we're doing or chapter books that the kids are currently reading on the end. We've got Kindles and computers and then just their schoolwork and it's all labelled and organised nicely. Then a couple of baskets for nappies and wipes and another um, basket on the end that just has like bibs and cloths and things for the baby. And that gets all tied down tightly with a strop things there. That, that. So it's all nice and firm when we're driving. The headphones for the kids are on little hooks. We just added those as well, um, which is working really, really well. Trying to, as we go, fine tune our organizing because in a tiny space with lots of lots of little humans, it can get messy very quickly, um, but we're getting there. We've got our window coverings for the bus, um, which are amazing both in summer and winter. They are made from um, foam, and then they just have the fabric and binding around the edge, they're stuck on by Velcro. So we pull those off and we roll them up and they kind of sit like this one is over here, or we tuck them down behind the seat here. Um, in winter, they keep the cold out and the warmth in, and in summer, they keep the heat out and the cool in. Um, we do have down here with our table, we have a foldable washing basket. When we go to the laundromat, if we're not using the washing machine down there or it's a lot of washing to get through, the kids put all their dirty washing into the washing basket and that goes in the van. In the future, this might be a nice wee spot for a fireplace, um, but we'll see. So, under couch storage. This is a question we get asked a lot. So on this side is all my bulk food storage. So I do a lot of baking, I love to bake bread. Um, so I go through a lot of flour and it's a lot cheaper to buy 20 kg bags of flour than it is to buy 5 kgs of flour. So they get stored under here. They are a bit tricky to get into because of the Velcro that we lift up. And yeah, there's bags under there, um, extra paper towels. This area we've got um, extra laptops. Ooh. Uh, computer bits and bobs. This is a bit of an odds and ends storage. It's the stuff that doesn't really have a place anywhere else. This has uh, the kids' extra school books. It has all of our art and craft supplies. Woo! In this part here, we've got all of our games. All of our board games have been repackaged into these Ziploc bags. So they all stack up really neatly. Behind me is the driver's area, which turns into James's office, but he will show you around there. So when the bus is not set up in a driving position, uh, this is what it looks like uh, as an office. I just got this little piece of custom plywood that I've cut here. Starlink internet, laptop, computer, docking station, and uh, yeah, and this is me for a work position. And it quickly converts back into a bus, put the steering wheel back on, and we can drive away. I make sure that these curtains are pulled, they come together so the kids know that when dad's behind the curtain working, uh, it better be very important if they're going to interrupt me. Of course, that doesn't stop all the interruptions, but it's a nice idea. <laughs> so coming into the back half of the bus, we've got the master bedroom behind this door, which then closes to close off the hallway down to where the bunk room is. It's a king size bed from wall to wall. We didn't want to downsize on that, so that's awesome. And it lifts up against the wall to access all the storage underneath. 
we've got big pull-out drawers, like all the way out. Um, we have three drawers each. I have another big drawer at the bottom and James has storage at the top. And then we have some hooks and things for hanging shirts or dresses or just stuff that um, we need to hang up. We have some storage baskets up the top here. And I've got like my jewelry boxes up here. We've got the ceiling fan, which keeps us nice and cool in summer. And then it has a cover that goes on. We've got some books here. And yeah, baby's clothes stay on that side. More books, everything we need. One thing we've found with eight of us living in the bus is shoe storage. We just, no matter how many times we declutter or rearrange, we're always ending up with shoes at the entranceways. Um, so we've just put these two baskets down here. We've got one here for kids sneakers and one here with river shoes and sort of bigger adult shoes in there, as well as the shoe storage in here. So we've got a hallway in our bus coming down here. I really wanted a barn style sliding door and my husband delivered. This closes, it's a pretty color and it gives us privacy in our little tiny bathroom. This is the bathroom. So we have a composting toilet down here, which honestly we actually really love. There is no smell, it's got a little 12 volt fan that's going constantly um, and it's got a urine diverter in the front so the wheeze gets plumbed down into the grey water tank and then number twos are in a bucket at the back and James empties that one, every one to two weeks. Sawdust for the composting toilet is in this, it pulls out there. And then this is our little rubbish bin for wheeze toilet paper. Let's not go in the poo bin. This is our shub area, our shower and tub. High sides to mitigate extra splashing. It means our little ones can have baths. And we've also got this, I love our shower. Full size shower, um, curtain pulls across. Shelves here for shampoo, bath toys. Towels are stored up here. Flannels and hand towels are up the top there as well as extra toilet rolls and bin liners. Toothbrush and toothpaste and a little cupboard here that opens up to hold bathroom things. The strip out and build of this bus was a huge project, but to be finally enjoying it, actually living the lifestyle, that is my favorite part. My favorite thing about the bus would be sitting here on this couch and looking out at the view when we've pulled up to a new location. The back of the bus is the kids' bunk room. I loved seeing bunk rooms in buses when we were watching lots of videos to see what sort of design we wanted to do because there's a lot of house buses but not many house buses with lots of children. So we have six children. We had four children when we started the bus build um, but we did plan for a fifth bunk bed because we wanted to have another one at some point and then we had another one as well. So Evie sleeps with us in the hammock but in here we've got the five beds so the two Older girls are up the top, um, and then we've got Reuben and Maya in the middle, and we Joash, our two-year-old, he sleeps down the bottom here. Each of the kids have two baskets each for their clothes, so they just pull out here. Um, tops and bottoms, pretty much, is how it's divvied up. Um, and these were just baskets from Spotlight. I tied string in the middle to hold them together, and James glued a bit of plywood on the bottom um, to prevent wear and tear and so that they slide more smoothly and they're awesome. This is the door, we call it the secret trap door. It goes down to the kids' toy room. So we've got bookshelves here, we do lots of reading. Each child has a shelf in their bunk bed and a reading lamp. Um, they all sort of chose their headboard design. Ruben painted his himself and they love their little cozy cubbies. The heater duct comes, um, blows out here. So in winter when we have the diesel heater going, it's super cozy and warm from both ends of the bus. We have 
the girls' basket dresses for the girls are all rolled up. They each have a section. There's three sections for Izzy, Lucy, and Maya. Nappies and wipes at the back. We've got a few wee toys for Maya and Joash. We've got some dolls, some uh, play kitchen food, and a big box of hair ties. When you have lots of girls. This is all the hair ties, clips, hair brushes. It all stays in the pink sparkly box and gets tucked away under here. These netting pockets are from the bus seats. So they were the original ones that were on the bus seats sitting behind, put them on here and they work great. This is the washing bag. And then each kid has a hook for dressing gowns. Um, the girls have handbags and that sort of thing. So there's a few hooks there. Thanks to this being a large tour coach, um, there's a lot of storage space underneath and we were really lucky when we bought this bus the the floor was pretty much already flat and a lot of buses there's like a channel that goes up the middle um, but we had a flat floor and heaps of storage underneath i've got diesel heater so this is our heating uh, in winter and that diesel heater pumps into a, a central duct that runs up the middle of the bus so the heat comes out and the living area and the bedrooms and the bathroom um, that works quite well. We've got a backup generator, so if we ever run out of sunshine, basically that's our reserve power supply when we're off grid. And we just got rubbish bags and spare fuel, the vacuum cleaner stored under there, and the wastewater can be dumped out of this dump valve. But we also have a, a pump, so I can dump our grey water through the garden hose, basically. So it's just a matter of connecting the hose, channeling where we want the grey water to go, bit down a drain, and uh, you just turn it on so we can dump, as long as we've got a long hose, we, can, we don't have to move the bus too often uh, for dumping if we're in a good location, which is great. Okay, this is the power bay. I have a, a box of spears, which I keep on here. This is our power system, so we've got 800 amp hours of lead acid, which gives us about 300 usable amp hours. The reason for that is they're second-hand batteries. They came out of a cell tower. Uh, they're a UPS backup. Got them really cheap. I would love a lithium-ion battery bank, but we just can't afford that right now, so that works great for us. We got a multi-charger, 2,000 watt inverter, and if we're plugged into Shure Power, that gives 80 amps of charging into the battery bank, and it also serves the Shure Power through to our 230 volt system. Uh, we got two solar controllers. We have 10 solar panels on the roof 150 watts each giving us a total of 1500 watts solar and the two solar controllers in parallel to uh, control those and then we've got a wee dc to dc charger there as well so for when the ba uh, bus is running we're charging our house battery uh, battery batteries when we when we're um, traveling this is our starlink router so we have starlink internet which is great we can be anywhere bottom of the South Island just recently. No cell phone coverage, but we had awesome uh, internet. So thanks, darling. Great stuff. Under here, it's pretty simple. We've got a mid-mount engine. So there's a Cummins diesel in there. It's like an 8.3 liter turbo diesel, Cummins, six speed manual. And uh, yeah, so those are the bus batteries and the motor in the middle. So in the back here is my toolbox. I like to be able to do odd jobs. Yeah, I've got all my power tools, tan tools, socket set, wrenches, uh, screwdrivers, chainsaw, glues, oils, grease, everything I need, pretty much. So with my toolbox and my box of spare screws and fittings and things, there's, there's not many jobs I can't complete on the road uh, if we need to. Got to have the tools if you're going to do the job. Also in the back here is uh, access to the kids' toy room, which you see we can access from uh, from their bedroom. So that's their library and Legos uh, all underneath there too. So this is the kids' toy room from the other side. They got a lot more space on this side uh, just because uh, there's no toolbox. Great to see them playing or sitting in here reading. Cool day, they'll have the doors closed. It's nice and warm in there. And on a hot day, you just leave the doors open and the breeze flows through and they can be playing in there. Uh, it's a great space. And when we pack up to travel, we put our camping chairs and table and stuff in here as well. So we've got a lot of extra storage space uh, for travel. Under here we have the laundry. So we've got a full size 9 kg 
uh, Literalux washing machine. When we're running off grid, it's cold wash only, but when we're plugged in, the washing machine heats its own water. It's great to have that, especially with the number of people making dirty washing in our home. Under this side, I've got spare hoses, and uh, this is our hot water, hot water system. Got two 9 kg gas bottles behind here. We've got a water filter as well, so this is where we fill the uh, water tanks from, and any any filling we do goes through the water filter. So all the water in our tanks is always filtered. 500 liters of fresh water on this side, 500 liters of grey water on the other side, and down the back we've got another 200. And 40 litres of grey water uh, that the bathroom runs into. We have lots of water, but it's amazing how quickly we can use it. This is our shore power connection. So if we're at a camping ground, we can just plug straight into this. If we're off grid and we need extra power, then I just plug in the little Honda generator uh, and that gives us all the power we need. Thanks for watching our house bus tour. If you enjoyed the video, you're still here watching, give us a like, we'd really appreciate that. Subscribe and try and find us on social media, Radiant Bus Life. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below or if there's anything else that you would love to see in our house bus. Remember the best roads are the roads less traveled and the best views are shared with others.